Welcome back to First Year Microeconomics. We've been looking at welfare economics, and in our presentation so far, we've looked at how to measure the gains from trade for a buyer. The benefit to the buyer of getting the product, less the amount the buyer pays, is the buyer's consumer surplus from the trade. And in the last presentation, we saw that we could use a simple rule to work out the consumer surplus in a competitive market for an individual buyer. It's simply the area under the individual buyer's demand curve, above the price the buyer pays, up to the quantity that the consumer purchases. And in the last presentation, we showed you two examples of how to use this rule. But so far, we've just looked at the gains from trade for one buyer. How do we work out the total gains from trade to all buyers from participating in a market? In other words, how do we work out the total consumer surplus from a market? Well, the first thing we need to do is remember that the market demand curve is just a horizontal sum of the individual demand curves. So if we add up the area under each individual consumer's demand curve, then adding that up over all consumers will simply give us the area under the market demand curve. So to get the total consumer surplus, we could go back to each individual consumer's demand curve, work out their consumer surplus and add it up, or we can just go to the market demand curve and look at the area under the market demand curve above the price up to the total quantity purchased. And this will give us the same number as if we looked at each individual demand curve and added it up. So we can take a shortcut to get the total gain to all buyers from participating in a market. Rather than looking at each individual buyer, we just have to look at the market demand curve. So let's now imagine we're looking at the Australian apple market and we've got quantity of apples down here on the horizontal axis, we've got price on the vertical axis, and let's imagine that the equilibrium price in the Australian apple market was a dollar per kilogram of apples, and at that price, four million apples are traded in Australia. That's the amount of apples that individual buyers buy in the marketplace. Then to get the consumer surplus of the entire Australian apple market, we can simply look at this blue shaded area here. In other words, we look at the area under the market demand curve, above the price that consumers pay, up to the quantity that consumers actually purchase. And this blue area is the total consumer surplus generated by the Australian apple market. More generally, to get consumer surplus in a market, look at the area under the market demand curve, above the price line, up to the quantity traded. That rule will work whenever we have price taking consumers in the market. A key point to note, however, is that we have now used our dollar is a dollar assumption. We've gone from looking at an individual's consumer surplus to looking at the market consumer surplus. To do that, we add it up consumer surplus for different consumers. So let's say there was a consumer in our market, Sarah. There might have been another consumer in our market, Sunita. There might have been a third consumer called Matt. We looked at the dollar consumer surplus to Sarah, the dollar consumer surplus to Sunita, and the dollar consumer surplus to Matt, and we simply added those dollar terms up to get the market consumer surplus. So our market level of consumer surplus did not depend on who actually got the surplus. We simply said a dollar to Sarah is the same as a dollar to Sunita is the same as a dollar to Matt. If Sunita got $10 surplus, if Sarah got $5 surplus and Matt got $2 surplus, that was $17 surplus. If we instead said that Sunita got $5, Sarah got $12 and Matt got nothing, that would still be $17 of surplus. The fact that we're moving the dollars between individual consumers is irrelevant to our market consumer surplus measure. And that means we're using the dollar is a dollar assumption. We don't care who gets the surplus. We're assuming 
that a dollar to Sarah is the same as a dollar to Matt, is the same as a dollar to Sunita, is the same as a dollar to any other consumer. And that's a necessary assumption when we went from our individual consumer surplus to get our market consumer surplus. Thanks for listening.